Hi, Jeff Maloshek here with Bailing Country. Today we're going to talk about troubleshooting tips with our electric drinkers and energy free waterers. Alright, in the first step of troubleshooting, if you're having ice build up in the water or around the edges, the first thing we obviously want to check for is power. We want to make sure we have electricity at the power source, which is in your fuse box, and make sure the breaker is turned on. Once we know that we have power coming from our fuse box to the drinker, we want to make sure that we do have 120 volts at our junction box. We recommend a certified electrician to be checking this, but if you have the capabilities, you want to use a multimeter to make sure you have 120 volts at the junction box. Okay, once we know we have power at our junction box, our next step is going to be to go into the thermostat. We want to make sure our thermostat, which is a two-wire thermostat, has power coming into one leg. If the temperatures are cold enough, you should have this be a closed circuit and have power on the other leg. One easy way to test this, if it's not cold enough, is to put this on an ice cube and wait approximately 30 seconds, and using an ohmmeter, you will close the circuit. Once we're certain that the thermostat has power to it and is operating properly, we're going to move on to the heat pad. The heat pad has two wires, black one being hooked up to the thermostat, the neutral wire being hooked up to the neutral wire on your input source. You want to make sure visibly that there's no damage to the heat pad. Sometimes if they get scratched, you will see a burn mark going from top to bottom that's going to signify that the heat pad is no longer working. Another way to check your heating pad is to use the multimeter and make sure that it completes a circuit when you hook between the white wire and the black wire. This will signify that you have a good connection going through. Once we know that we have power to the unit, the thermostat is functioning properly and the heating pad is functioning properly, one of the things we can do to adjust is move the position of the thermostat. So it will turn on sooner or later and the duration of the amount of time it is on will change by lowering it away. So for example, with this thermostat here, here's the placement from the factory. If it seems like it's not running enough, you want to move the thermostat down, away from your heating pad, because if it's too close to the heating pad and it's getting too much heat, it'll turn the thermostat off too soon and not allow it to heat the water source. So one way to do it is move it about an inch at a time, move it further and further away from the heating pad source. If you're having problems with your water line or your valve freezing, some of the things we're going to start looking at, first of all, is your supply line coming up out of the earth tube. You want to make sure that it's not touching the side of the tube on any side. When you get up above the frost line, the ground a foot down could be zero degrees. So if it's touching that, it could be freezing this. So coming up in your six inch or larger hole, you want to make sure that your water supply line is not touching the side of your tube. Another thing we're going to look at is make sure by the valve here that there's no obstructions. Do not ever put insulation in here because the heat that heats your valve is actually coming from down below in the chamber from our heating pad. That heating pad heats the bottom of the water source and also heats the chamber. Any excess heat comes up to this hole here and fills this lid, which is gonna keep your valve from freezing. We also wanna make sure that our water height is adjusted to the recommended inch to inch and a half below the trough. This helps seal off your gap here so that cold air cannot get in and into your valve chamber where it could cause freezing. Another thing to look at is make sure you have no air gaps between your concrete and the base of your fountain. Any little bit of air gap can come in there and suck away the heat, which is not going to allow that heater to be able to put the heat out it needs to take care of the valve or your water source. All right, another place to check for air gaps is on your access door. Right around the seal here, you want to make sure everything's sealed up tight because again, any air leak at all is going to affect the performance of the infrared heater. The top, you want to have your water level up high to make sure that that's sealed. On your side gap here, make sure your bolts are secured and there's no air gaps. And on the bottom of the fountain, make sure there are no air gaps. Air gaps are what kills the efficiency of the heater. One thing you might have your electrician do when he wires this up is to go ahead and put a receptacle in here with a switch. What this allows you to do, if you ever have a failure of a thermostat or a heating pad, you're able to put an emergency heat source in, such as a light bulb, by plugging it in directly right here, and you have a switch to turn it on and off. It'll save you some time and energy if something was ever to fail and you're in an emergency situation. If you're needing more help finding which drinker is right for your operation, please visit our website.